Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt Napoli, and welcome to episode 127 of Snack Minute. Um, we have an oldie but a goodie here. Uh, Joe Clark has joined us yet again. Uh, he's going to talk to us about NSO and Cisco Modeling Labs. Joe, welcome back. And uh, wh what are you hoping to share with us today? Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Kareem. Hello, Snackers. Um, building off of what you've seen in episode 126 uh, with Jesus, I thought I'd show you a something that, that I'm actually building for a production use case, and that's using Cisco NSO with its actions capability to integrate NSO with, in this case, NetBox, uh, so a source of truth system, um, in support of the Cisco Live Europe data center network um, that I'm kind of responsible for. Um, so what I would love to, to show you, and, and it could it could work with in the uh, the playground that you just saw, but I'm going to uh, demonstrate something running in CML, is how we can have data in one system, um, and we can pull that data in into NSO to be able to deploy using the, the capabilities of NSO, the service model framework, uh, into our network. Uh, and the reason actions make this so cool um, is that we can remove the external system from the critical path of the service. We don't want to put something that's external that could potentially go down in that critical path. So we pull that out and we use actions to do the integration. So if all goes well, uh, I hope to be able to show you a live demo of this uh, today. Yeah, that sounds super interesting. So um, just to help give our snackers a frame of reference, NetBox, you mentioned quickly, was, was the source of truth. So is that going to hold the configurations that we're going to then promote through NSO to the actually deploy our, our live network? Some of it. So one of the one of the challenges that I had, um, one of the challenges that I have, not with that one, uh, with <laughs> this one, um, last year in 2023, uh, when I did this, um, was I was defining VLANs, in particular VLANs, I was defining them in two different places. So last year was the first year I used NetBox um, and I was ending up defining the VLANs like VLAN 17, VLAN 23. I was defining them in NetBox so I could use some of the IPAM, the IP address management capabilities. Uh, and I was also defining them in my NSO service. And I thought, and I presented this, so I presented this at, as a breakout at Cisco Live, the work I did. And one of the things at the end, I said, you know, I can do this better. I can have NSO be my source of truth, and I can have it pull in the, uh, the VLAN information. I can have my service pull in the VLAN information using this action framework. Um, so I've, I made all this code available. Um, we'll share the link with uh, all snackers everywhere. Uh, so this is what it looked like in 2023. And what I've started to do in 2024 is pull out some of the VLANs. So the, the some of the VLANs are still there. So I'm, I'm kind of doing this piecemeal. But ultimately, NSO is going to be my, my source of truth. So in our demo today, we've got this network. This represents, this is running in Cisco Modeling Labs. This represents the data center network portion of Cisco Live Europe. So we have a DC1, a DC2, uh, four uh, Nexus 9K switches, and we're running NSO within uh, in an out-of-band portion of the network within that network. And we also have NetBox running. So over here in NetBox, I have my list of VLANs um, that, that we're going to have. I'll make that a little bit bigger for people. We have a list of VLANs, and one of the VLANs I've, I've defined that I haven't rolled out to the network yet is this new VLAN 6.6, Eliminate Jedi. Um, so I've defined <laughs> this VLAN here. I, I, I figured I, I figured execute all the 66. Um, I figured that would go over with the, the nerd community. It takes a little while to load because I actually am running NetBox through the, the access to NetBox is through the data plane of the simulated network, but this is my VLAN. So I've defined it, but it's not yet on my devices. So I've created an action. Uh, I've, I've created the, uh, the action here. Uh, I can show you the code just real quick. We're not gonna go line by line, um, but I've created this action that will pull all of the VLAN data out of uh, NetBox for all of the VLANs, compare that to what's in the network, um, and then if I choose, by default, I do what's called a dry run, so I can see what's going to happen. We'll see that. And if I choose, yeah, it looks right, I can commit that, and that will deploy it into the network. 
Um, so let's take a look at what that looks like in the CLI first, and then I'll show you how we can we can make use of RESTConf as well if we want. So here's my NSO CLI. I'm in admin mode, and I'm go I've already defined my service. So I have a Cisco Live uh, Amsterdam 2024 already defined, and I've got a, a couple of actions: Sync ACLs, which talks to another uh, tool we have, and then Sync VLANs, which is what we're going to look at today. So I'll, I'll run the sync VLANs first with commit false. So we're not going to do a commit. We're going to do a dry run of this. What this is going to do right now is check netbox. So it's going out. It's grabbing using the Pi netbox um, uh, package. So it's it, using the netbox APIs. It's pulling down the VLAN information there and then comparing that to what is in my service. So what what's actually uh, deployed currently, and it should find that VLAN 666 is not deployed in the network. That means it's not in my service model. So I have the, the Cisco Live Amsterdam 2024 service instance. It's not there. And because it's not there, it's not in the network. So if I were to commit this, it would first add VLAN 66 with all of these parameters. So this is how I've modeled a VLAN in my service. So this is my service. This is how I'm uh, modeling VLAN 66, um, pulling this data in out of NetBox. And then because it's modeled in my service, up above here is the configs that's actually going to be deployed to the devices. So this little bit of config here turns into, this is just one device uh, right here. This is DC2 Ether Switch 2. It turns into all of this NXOS specific config. It adds the layer 2 VLAN. It adds an SVI for VLAN 66 with IPv4 information, with IPv6 information, with OSPF, um, sets the MTU, adds HSRP, all of that, adds it to all of the required port channels that it needs to be on based on its uh, category, um, based on where it needs to live in the network. So if I like that, I can go ahead and commit these changes. Um, let me stop here, see if there's anything you think that I'm, I'm, I'm leaving out for, for the snacker's enjoyment. No, this, this makes a lot of sense, Joe, from what you're trying to accomplish, and you've explained it really well. Um, the question that I had that's running through my head, and, and this is maybe an, another iteration of this, or maybe it's not, um, what happens... The, if I go in and change my single source of truth, could I invoke the actions uh, automatically where I can go do a dry run and execute based on essentially my changes in that box, as opposed to actually going in and reading and pulling the data and then applying changes? Absolutely. So, so now you're getting to where the power of automation gets really fun. Um, and what I'm, I'm looking to do. So I, I'm, 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 I think I'm in the walk phase of crawl, walk, run right now. The run sure. is absolutely what you say. There is a webhook capability in NetBox that I could have a callback out to um, a kind of intermediary service that would then do what I'm going to show you here. So this is um, Postman. So I've got a postman up here and I've, I'm going to create a, a post um, to execute the same um, sync VLANs. But this time in my body, I'm going to set commit to true um, and I'll send this and, and this will take a little while to, to go, but while I'll, I'll complete answering your question. So because I can, I can execute this without going through the CLI, I can do it very programmatically uh, with something like RESTCOM. I can absolutely do what you're talking about. Uh, I can say execute the dry run first, make sure that I what I get back is, is success. So if I look back at the CLI, you see that part of what mm -hmm. I'm sending out of my action um, is a, a Boolean success. It'll be true or false. So if I if I do this without the commit true with commit false, I can get this and say, yep, success is true. Um, the thing I can't do automatically is, is look at this. So the other thing you want to do with your dry run is look, does it, does it seem sane? But really, once you do this one or two times, to your point, then, then you're out of the walk phase. You can get to that run phase, kind of trust what it's going to do is right. And as long as you see success true here, you can go ahead and, and pull the trigger and then do a commit true which we're doing here in the background. And that's then going to push all of that out there. And you've, you've closed the loop. 
So as soon as you, this is normal, these really are not going to fail. We're going to wait and hopefully get a, a success true out of this. Um, that's really the, the, the closing the loop and making sure your automation is sane where you don't have to worry, okay, I've done this in NetBox, what else do I have to do? And then here we go, commit done, success true. But now comes the interesting part. We wanna go back to our devices really quick. Over here, maybe go on to this switch, log in with the ultra secure stuff and do a show run. Uh, actually, I'll just do a show VLAN. And we should see in the output, if everything worked right, we should see a VLAN 66 eliminate jet. And we can nice. also validate that we should have a, a SVI for eliminating the Jedi. We do for VLAN 66 for Jedi. Um, so everything got deployed correctly. And the other cool thing about this is if I choose, you know, I don't really need VLAN 66 in my network. I'm not actually going to delete it here. I'm, I'm just going to mark it in a way that it doesn't uh, doesn't exist in the net. Uh, doesn't it, it won't be looked at by my action. The same thing, it pulls it out of the network and that's the power of NSO. So the actions allow me to, uh, the actions allow me to integrate these two systems. The power of NSO means that if I come over here and, and try this again, I can pull that out. Uh, it, NSO knows all of the commands to back the VLAN, not just out of my service model, not just do the minuses here, that, that can be kind of easy, but also do all of the required minuses up here to fully pull that VLAN out. And, and that means, again, Karim, to your point, that I can close this loop and have my operators, have my team members, when they need to define a new VLAN, the only thing they have to do, go here, add the VLAN or remove the VLAN or make the changes. And then in the background, the automation is running to integrate those two systems and make sure the network is always up to date. And within the action, within the NSO actions itself, it knows what it needs to do to propagate, properly propagate that and configure that VLAN on the device. You didn't have to actually manually handle that. You just said, I want to use this specific action based on what I'm trying to do in NSO and in the back end, that library itself handled it for you. Is that true? All I did is, well, I modeled this. So, so when I add a VLAN, it's adding it to, it's using this template to add it to my service model. I did have to say, okay, based on these parameters, then I have other templates here that talk to the device that turn mm -hmm. all of this, this little bit of config into this, this larger config. I think in the presentation I did uh, uh, last year, I'm getting like 130 times config compression by doing it here. So I don't have to worry about <laughs> my, my team members don't have to worry about knowing what all of these things do. These right. little bits of, of custom config that I've created turn into something and turn into it reliably, meaning there, there's no chance that they forget a, a trunk port or, or uh, a, a port channel. There's no chance that they would uh, forget that because I've taken care and NSO is taking care of making sure all of that gets applied consistently. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, actually. yeah, very cool. Um, so for just for my edification, for Cisco Live coming up in Amsterdam, um, are, are you planning on going the whole way with the automation that Kareem had mentioned earlier, or is there a point where you're, you know, you're going to maintain human intervention here? I am planning to go the full Monty. Um, oh, uh, that's it, exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am planning to turn it off once we go into production though. Um, okay. So leading up, so, so we have a staging exercise that starts in the beginning of December um, where I'll actually deploy this and, and, and NSO will take ownership of the configuration. This, it, it does, by the way, it doesn't just do the Nexus 9Ks. This automates the 9Ks, the UCS manager and the vSphere, the, the um, uh, VMware wow. uh, infrastructure. So it'll push the same VLAN all the way down. Um, so I plan on doing the, the full Monty there. And then when we get on site before we go into production and the reason I, I don't want to keep it on fully automated when we go into production, they get a little bit twitchy around uh, configuration changes. I don't want someone accidentally changing the net box 
propagating a config change in the net, even if it doesn't cause any outage, it's going to make people uneasy. So I, I, I feel that anything that we do, we decide we're going, we need to add a VLAN, we need to modify something, we'll audit that manually, make sure it all looks good, and then we'll still use the automation to push it, but it won't be a closed loop. I gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, very interesting. And uh, you know, what's fun is we don't get a ton of like production environment type conversations. And so this is, <laughs> this is awesome to see something that we're actually going to use for, or you're actually going to use, I'm not going to do any of this, but that you're actually going to use at Cisco Live. So um, unfortunately, Joe, that's all the time we have. It's always a pleasure having you on Snack Minute. We really appreciate your time and expertise. Um, Freaking fantastic, man. Thank you so much.